Okay, Second Chronicles chapter 4. Moreover, he made an altar of brass, twenty cubits the length thereof, and twenty cubits the breadth thereof, and ten cubits the height thereof. He also made a molten sea of ten cubits from brim to brim, round and compass. It means round, circled. The compass is round. And five cubits the height thereof, and a line of thirty cubits did compress it round about. Now, notice Solomon is rebuilding the instruments that were in the original tabernacle. It is this uh, altar of brass is the brazen altar. This molten sea is the brazen uh, uh, is the brazen uh, labor that Moses made. He's redoing everything. And I would believe that the line of 30 cubits, the compass and round about that line is either the circumference are all the way around or from one end to the other end. I'm not really sure of mathematics and construction. But you're given the dimensions of and under it was the similitude of oxen, which did compass in about ten in a ten in a cubit, compassing the sea round about, two rows of oxen which cast when it was cast. And it stood upon twelve oxen, three looking toward the north, three looking toward the west, three looking toward the south, and three looking toward the east. And the sea was set upon them, and all their hinder parts were inward. So what you have is, you, again, you had twelve oxen. There are three looking in each direction. Their faces are out. Their rear ends are in the inside. And supposedly on their backs is where the labor sat, with the water. Why oxen? Well, oxen, oxen is the burden of beast. He carries, he works the farm. He's your John Deere tractor of today. And also Paul likens an ox to the preacher. So this is something new else that was in, in, in Moses' time. It was just sat there on, on, a, on a still. But here you get oxen. Again, the oxen are not worshipped. They are a design. And the thickness of it was a hand breath, and the brim of it like the work of a brim of a cup, with flowers of lilies. And it received and held 3,000 baths. Now, if you go over to, uh, I don't have the reference here, but supposedly that there's a contradiction in your Bible. Between, it, it says right here that um, it held 3,000 baths. And I forget where it says the other place. This one right here says it held. It held. In other words, what we're told, being told in chapter 4 is 3,000 baths of water is how much it held. When you go over to the other part, it tells you how much it could hold. The capacity. There's no discrepancy. It's, you know, Listen, you can have a gallon container in your refrigerator... But you don't have to fill it all up to a gallon. You can fill up three quarters, and it's able to hold a gallon, but it's only got three quarters. If you read the scriptures with these people that call discrepancies in the Bible, they're full of discrepancies, and it's not your Bible. So let's continue on. He made also ten labors, and put five on the right hand, and five on the left. To wash in them such things as they offered for burnt offerings. They washed in them. But the sea was for the priest to wash in. Alright, now, ten labors. You weren't going to take the... There, there were certain animal parts that you were to wash. Now, you were not going to take that animal part and go to the, to the labor and stick it in there and wash. That, that would pollute the water. So what Solomon did here, he's got ten labors, five on each side. You wash the animal parts there. And other things you had to wash. But the labor itself was for the priest to wash. See the differences that's going on between Moses' tabernacle and Solomon's. Remember, Moses' tabernacle was built to travel. Solomon's is built 
And had Israel done correctly and obeyed God in everything, Solomon's temple would still be here today. And right now you know Israel is not doing right because there is no tabernacle at all, no temple. All they got is that wailing wall. He made ten candlesticks of gold. What's the difference there? Moses built one candlestick. Solomon builds ten. Of gold according to, according to their form and set them in the temple. Five on the right hand and five on the left. Well, if you read Moses, there was only one candlestick in the place. And there was the what we believe was the altar of incense and the table of showbread. Now he's got ten. Look at this. He made also ten tables and placed them in the temple. Five on the right hand, five on the right side, and five on the left. He also made a hundred basins of gold. So, Moses had one table. Solomon does everything in tens. Ten in your Bible is Gentile. And what's one of the first women that we, or people that we come, we read about with Solomon? First of all, we read about that, that wife of Egypt, a pharaoh. And then we read about the woman of, uh, of Ethiopia that comes. Queen Sheba comes and asks. She's a Gentile. So there's ten tables. There's ten candlesticks. Would the candlesticks be on the table? I don't know. But if the candlesticks were made after the candlestick of Moses, there would be 70 lights. Because the candlestick Moses had had seven lamps. Three branches on each side and one in the middle. And he made a hundred basins of gold. So it would be, if you were to take a proper division, ten into a hundred, ten bowls per table. If you were to divide it. Look at the tens. They're showing up. Now you say that can't be for the bread because there were six and six, twelve bread. Furthermore, he made the court of priests and the great court. Well, here's two courts. There's a court of the priests and there's a great court. Well, Moses had only one court where the labor was and the brazen altar together. And laid the doors of them with brass. Brass is judgment. And remember Moses' tabernacle. When anything went into the ground, it sat in a brass socket. Gold was inside the, the, the tent, the tabernacle itself. Overlaid with the, you know, with the, uh, the badger skin and all those skins. And around the courtyard was the white um uh, fine linen and he set the sea on the right side of the east end over against the south you have to look you have to draw it completely out uh, it's you you can place it just you know, get yourself a pen and paper and, and Haram made the pots and the shovels and the basins. And Hiram finished the work that he was to make for King Solomon for the house of God. To wit. That's an old English word. Not that hard to understand. You read to wit. The two pillars. The palm, I mean, here's what we're talking about. This is the subject. The two pillars, the pommels, and the chapters. That's, again, that's what's on top of the pillars. And the two reeves to cover the two pommels of the chapters, which were on top of the pillars. Right? This is the pommels and all that. These are these these capstones, if you want to call them something like that. They would sit on top of the chapters. And four hundred pomegranates on the two wreaths, decorations, 
two rolls of pomegranates on each reef to cover the two pommels of the chapters which were upon the pillars. You know, it's amazing how God talks about this tabernacle, this temple that's gone. It was destroyed during when Babylon came in because the kings of Israel didn't do right. But again, what again again between when uh, Jesus Christ was circumcised to twelve and a half years old, what do we know about Jesus? What about we're told about Peter? Peter has a mother-in-law, but we're not told anything about a wife. Was Paul married, or was he a widower, or was he never married? It's interesting. He made also bases and labors. Made he upon the bases. Now that's those labors we talked about before. Those labors that were made, they had bases on them, something to stand on. One C and twelve oxen under it. Now notice how he just says C. Why couldn't he call a container? Why anything like that? Because that C represents the universe. I know some people look at me, I'm crazy, and I'm crazy anyway in their eyes, but I don't care. It says over there in Genesis 1 that God moved upon the waters. When you look at that tabernacle, that tabernacle pictures heaven. That tabernacle pictures the universe. That tabernacle pictures man and his salvation. you got to go through hell, the brazen altar. You gotta be washed in the word before you go into the holy of holies. The universe. You got hell, the sun of the earth, the Bible said. Then you got the, the, the labor, you got the universe where the dragon lives. You know, the old world time maps used to have the dragon floating around the Atlantic Ocean. Wrong ocean, wrong body of water. Try Neptune and all where they are. Where all the Roman gods and planets and all they are. And then the holies of holies, you got God's throne, heaven of heaven. The pots also, and the shovels, and the flesh hooks. All these were used for the sacrifices. And all their instruments did Hiram his father make to King Solomon for the house of the Lord of bright brass. In the plain of Jordan did the king cast them in the clay ground between Sukkoth and Zeradath. Thus Solomon made all these vessels in great abundance, for the weight of brass could not be found out. There was just so much, they did what they were supposed to do with it, they were faithful. And Solomon made all the vessels that were for the house of God, the house of God, the golden altar also. Well, that's the incense altar. That's the altar. That's the altar of prayer. That's where John the Baptist's father went in. He remakes that. The tables wherein the showbread was set. So the showbread was still there. Now, did each table have twelve? I don't know. Maybe only one table had 12, the other ones had, I don't know. More over the candlesticks with their lamps. Those, yes, the 10 of them. And they should burn after the manner before the oracle of pure gold. Now, the oracle is the holy of holy. The holy place is the oracle. And he's telling you those candlesticks, just like the tabernacle of Moses, are in the holy place. That oracle, that most holy place, the ark and the cherubim, are, there is still no light in that place. It is dark as anything unless God's there. But when you read in the book of Psalms, it says, and God dwells in the darkness. They're possibly talking about that the most holy place. Because you can't tell me there's darkness in heaven. The capital H. Well, the darkness I know is the universe. 
and the flowers, and the lamps, and the tongues, made he of gold and the perfect gold. Now that flowers there is the decoration of the candlestick. And when we read the decoration of the candlestick in of Moses, there was a knop and a flower and a almond and, and a knop and a flower and a almond and a knop and a flower and an almond. Solomon just says there's a flower. It's, yeah. And the snuffers and the basins and the spoons and the censers of pure gold. He's telling you all the stuff of the candlestick. He's telling you all the stuff for the golden altar that needed to be made, that needed to be instrumented. You had to twin the wicks. You had to fill the oil. You had to take the old incense out, put new ones in. You had to clean the stuff. Listen, it didn't clean by itself. I mean, which is also got to call you to uh, uh, a question in your Bible. Everything God wants clean, God doesn't want a mess. So here's the question. When that priest went in once a year, the day of atonement, and put the blood on the mercy seat, who cleaned it? You didn't go in there unless you had blood. And you only went in there once a year and it was only the high priest. And he went in there twice. One for his sins and one for the sins of the people. And the snuffers and the basins of, and the spoons and the censers of pure gold and the entry of the house. In the doors thereof for the most holy place. That'd be the way the you know the division between the holy place and the most holy place, and the doors of the house of the temple were of gold. Oh, so what Solomon's telling us here is his oracle, his temple doesn't have a, a veil, it has doors. But we did read a veil earlier in chapter three, verse four. It said, uh, 14, it said, He made a veil of blue and purple and crimson, fine linen, wrought cherubims thereof. So there was possibly there was a door there and the veil itself. And that's the end of that chapter.